to introduce Professor Massimiliano Pontil. Um, he's a senior researcher at the Italian Institute of Technology and a professor of computational statistics and machine learning at University College London, and also a co-director of Ellis Unit Genoa. He has been active in machine learning research for over 20 years, working on theory and algorithms, including the areas of kernel methods, multitask and transfer learning, online learning, sparsity, regularization, and a statistical learning theory. Today, he's presenting his recent works on learning dynamical systems via Koopman operator regression in reproducing kernel Hilbert spaces. So I pass it over to Massimiliano. Thanks very much uh, for the introduction. And thanks for inviting me, even though remotely. Uh, I, I have to say that I like Canada a lot, and uh, I had a, a very interesting uh, um, experiences there. And uh, I hope I will visit you sometime in the future. So, okay, so this is a recent work uh, um, on uh, learning dynamical systems uh, via Coupon operator regression in producing current hyperspaces. Is a recent work um, uh, that we finished uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, it is um, joint work with my two postdocs, uh, Vladimir Kostic and Pietro Novelli, and also uh, three collaborators, Andreas Maurer, Carlo, Carlo Ciriberto, and, and Lorenzo Rosasco. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to uh, introduce the problem that we study, uh, which is the problem of um, uh, learning uh, Koopman operators associated to uh, Markov chains. And uh, um, then I will uh, present a statistical formulation of this problem, which uh, will lead us to um, estimators. In particular, I will uh, um, advocate the use of reduced rank estimators. I will then present some numerical experiments with the proposed estimators, and I will conclude by uh, learning theory, statistical learning analysis of uh, the estimators. <clears throat> so the problem is the following. We have a, a time homogeneous Markov chains. So this means, uh, um, I mean, if you come from machine learning or statistics, you all know that this means that the distribution of uh, the value tomorrow, given the past, only depends on the value today. Okay, so this is, uh, 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 captured by this transition kernel P, and uh, uh, so uh, there is this formula, okay? So, um, so here um, we consider general Markov chains, so uh, the random variable xt take value in, uh, in a set uh, calligraphic x, and sigma x is the sigma algebra. Um, so what we are interested in, uh, we are interested in uh, uh, this Koopman, Koopman operator, which you see here in the second formula. So uh, it is um, defined for a suitable space of function, F. And uh, it uh, uh, describes the conditional expectation of F uh, at uh, the time uh, T plus one, given uh, the value of the random variable at time T, okay? So, um, as, a, as, a, as an example, as a prototypical example, it may be that <clears throat> the um, Markov chain is defined by this vector value function ff, and uh, uh, the value tomorrow is equal to the function f of the value today plus some IID um, uh, noise variable. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so why do we want to do this? Okay, so uh, well, we'll see this in a moment. But um, first, uh, uh, so these are well-studied objects. And uh, um, typically the space F is the space of uh, bounded uh, uh, functions. Uh, however, in, in the talk, we will assume, which is uh, um, typical in the case of Markov chains, that there, is a, that there is an invariant distribution, pi, okay? So this means that if I sample the value today from pi, then the value tomorrow will still be distributed with pi. So the distribution doesn't change along the Markov chain. So in this case, uh, um, we can see that we can define this operator on uh, the space of square integrable functions 
with respect to the measure pi. Okay. <clears throat> so we can see that in this case, the operator is well defined and bounded. Um, so this uh, uh, will be our choice for, for F. And secondly, we will be interested, uh, interested in learning this, uh, um, this operator. And question is, can we learn this operator from data? So from a trajectory of, of the dynamical system of the Markov chain, and the answer we will see is yes. Uh, all uh, what we will do, we will restrict this operator to a reproducing kernel Hilbert space, suitable reproducing kernel Hilbert space, and um, <clears throat> which uh, you probably know, it's a, it's a Hilbert space associated to a kernel function, which is posit positive semi-definite, and it measures the norm of functions in the space, linear combination of the kernel, by the quadratic form uh, associated to the kernel matrix and to the functional coefficients. <clears throat> so why we are why are we inter uh, are we interested in um, in learning uh, this coupon operator? Okay, so our goal is to um, to predict right here the expected value of a function f, which in the field of dynamical systems it, it is also called observable. So x. X is the state of the dynamical system and F is some uh, um, variable which uh, of physical interest say. So we are interested in computing these expectations. And uh, um, uh, this is what the coupon operator does for us, okay? So, but one may, may wonder why don't we uh, instead learn the transfer operator P and then we compute this uh, um, coupon operator. Well, this is a valid approach. However, having the uh, operator, the coupon, the coupon operator also allows us to interpret the, the property of the systems because the operator is linear. So we can do something like an eigenvalue decomposition. And from that, we can, uh, um, we can understand something about the properties of the system. So this is what is called in the field uh, coupon mode decomposition. Right. So, assuming that um, the coupon operator a pi has um, eigenvalues and eigenfunctions, so here the operator is not symmetric; it, 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 it's not self-adjoint. So there are left and right eigenfunctions. Assuming these exist, then uh, <clears throat> we can uh, use them to study the temporal e evolution of uh, the observable f, okay? So if I take the t power of the operator, uh, you can see by a direct computation that this measures the um, conditional expectation of the observable at time t, given that uh, the starting, um, that at time zero, the, the state is equal to x. And by using the spectral decomposition, interestingly, we can separate uh, the dependency on time through the eigenvalues, the, the dependency in, in, on, uh, uh, on the starting condition through the right uh, uh, eigenfunctions. And then the only dependency on the observable comes from, uh, it comes, uh, in, um, you see it in these coefficients, which are called uh, the static modes, okay? So this allows us to, uh, um, to, uh, to study how an observable of the system evolves uh, um, with time. And here you can see a picture of, uh, of a PDE, which has been discretized and uh, where uh, this uh, decomposition has been used to study the uh, different, uh, um, the different uh, components of the system in particular, here you see how the eigenvalues, right? Uh, the, the, um, since the eigenvalues are, comple are complex numbers, you see their amplitude and their frequencies are, and their frequencies. Okay, so uh, as I said, uh, um, um, we are not the first to study this, uh, this problem. In fact, there has been a, a tremendous interest uh, during the past years. And uh, in, I would say more in, uh, in applied mathematics and in, uh, uh, you see here, SIAM, et cetera, 
and a lot of interest and uh, both on using Cooperman operators to describe dynamical systems, but in particular on data-driven approaches, okay? Using data to uh, estimate uh, the operator and uh, the respect of the composition. So uh, there has also been some work in machine learning in the past on uh, studying uh, some different but related problem which I will mention uh, uh, later in the talk, which is the problem of computing um, conditional mean embeddings. So, was, so our contribution in this work is uh, in uh, um, linking this uh, um, previous work, extensive previous work, more to machine learning and, and statistics. So in particular, we are interested in uh, uh, laying down a, a statistical framework for studying the problem. And also in particular, we want to understand the notion like what is the risk of the operator. And also by this study, we also uh, are interested in uh, studying uh, principal estimators and uh, uh, which are supported or justified by uh, statistical learning bounds. So to begin, <clears throat> let me um, present such a, such a framework. So as I mentioned before, we uh, need to use the theory of reproducing kernel hyperspaces. So we have a function k, <coughs> um, which uh, goes from uh, the, the state space times itself, and uh, which we assume it um, uh, seen as a function of, so the, uh, the, fun, uh, the kernel evaluated x comma x, it is an integrable function with respect to x. Okay, so in this case, uh, we know from, uh, it is simple to, to see from the theory of producing kernel that the producing kernel Hebel space, which I mentioned before, is a space which is obtained by taking linear combination of kernel sections and uh, um, by measuring their norm by the quadratic form uh, associated to um, the uh, functional coefficients and the kernel gram matrix. So in this case, if the kernel is integrable, then uh, the reproducing kernel in the space is contained in the space of square integrable functions on which the Kupman operator is defined. Also, uh, in this case, <coughs> if uh, we uh, consider the injection operator, which associates function in the real space to function in L2, the same function in L2, just by changing the norm, then we can see that this operator is Hilbert Smith. Okay. So in this case, <clears throat> then uh, um, what is the implication of this? The implication of this is that if we restrict the coupon operator, that if you remember, uh, we it was defined on uh, uh, in this way, right? And we define it on L2 or pi. Now, if we restrict it to the Hilbert space, right? So we consider this operator z pi to be a pi times the injection. Then this operator is also Hilbert Smith, right? Because the coupon operator is bounded, the injection is uh, uh, Hilbert Smith, and the product of the two remains Hilbert Smith. Okay. So this is interesting because uh, um, um, unlike the coupon operator, which may not be Hilbert Smith, this, uh, his restriction to the Hilbert space is Hilbert Smith. And then um, this uh, 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 is good for us because we may hope to approximate it by finite rank operators. And uh, when uh, we will have a, a, a sample trajectory from the process, the estimators that we will build will be finite rank operators. Okay. so. Since our target operator z pi is Hilbert Smith, then we uh, we have hope that we can estimate it well from uh, with finite rank operators. So, the, uh, <clears throat> so with this notation, the definition of the risk of an operator G. So, what we will learn is an operator G between the Hilbert space as, and itself, and our estimate for z pi will be s pi times G. Okay, and the quality of the approximation of G is measured by this risk, 
which is simply the, uh, the square Hilbert-Smith distance between the target operator and our estimator, okay? So what these uh, risk measures is a cumulative expect one step ahead prediction error over um, an orthonormal basis in the, in the Hilbert space. <clears throat> okay, so, um, um, so now I want to present some, uh, um, so some results which uh, link uh, the um, a candidate estimator G, which will have a certain risk to, um, to uh, the, the mode of composition, okay? So, which as we saw before, right, is, uh, is basically the spectral decomposition of the operator and it is used to describe the temporal evolution of an observable, okay? <clears throat> so, um, so first uh, result is this proposition one, which says that if the Hilbert space, if the reproducing kernel Hilbert space <clears throat> is dense in the space of uh, uh, square integral functions, and this is not a strange requirement because we know that for many kernel functions, which are uh, the so-called universal kernels, for example, the Gaussian kernel, uh, uh, the Hilbert space uh, is dense in L2, okay? So in this case, uh, the, uh, the, the, the minimal risk is zero, okay? When we take the infimum of uh, Hilbert smith operators. Also, for every value of delta, arbitrarily small, there will be, a, a, as I mentioned before, a finite rank operator in the Hilbert space, which makes the, uh, which makes the risk less than delta, okay? So what is the implication of this, uh, this result is that, um, so, is that if the restriction of the coupon operator to the Hilbert space is a so-called well-specified in, uh, in statistical terminology. So it means it can be written as the uh, injections times an operator, an Hilbert-Smith operator on H. So in this case, this operator AH is a coupon operator, okay? So as we, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, the coupon operator is defined by choosing a spade a space, okay, the beginning space F, which remains invariant under the conditional expectations, expectation. And in this case, um, sorry. So in this case, uh, if uh, this condition is true, then uh, this operator on the hyperspace or the, on the reproducing kernel hyperspace defines a coupon operator. So the, the reproducing kernel hyperspace is invariant under the conditional expectation. <clears throat> In addition, if we have uh, an operator G on the Hilbert space, which will have a certain risk, okay? So if G is equal to AH, the risk will be zero, perfect. But let's say we have another operator G, which will be our estimator that we will introduce shortly. And if this um, um, operator has a spectral decomposition, and this is not a strange, uh, again, a strange uh, condition because typically there will be a spectral decomposition, uh, then we can, uh, um, we can look at the mode decomposition, uh, sometimes called dynamic mode decomposition of the operator G. Okay, so this, we can look at the spectral decomposition of operator G. Then we can take his power, his T power, to approximate the conditional expectation after T steps of the dynamical systems. And we can uh, uh, make two conclusions. So the first conclusion is that <clears throat> our estimation of the conditional expectation after T steps, so this will be our, uh, our will forecast uh, um, the value, the expected value of the observable after T steps of the Markov chain or, or of the discrete dynamical system with the operator G. Okay, so the, the error in this, in, in the, uh, in card by using G to the T power to compute this conditional expectation 
deteriorates when the uh, when t the number of steps increases. Okay, but also as you can see, if the risk is small, this error is small. Okay, so this is the first observation. The second observation is uh, um, that eigen the, the, the eigen pair lambda psi. Okay, so psi is the right eigen function, and lambda is the corresponding eigenvalue, uh, will be approximate eigen pair of the Koopman operator. <clears throat> so the smaller the risk, the smaller the error, but also crucially, as you can see here in uh, the denominator, there is the sigma r, which is the smallest non-zero single value of s pi times g. Okay, so if this is small, the approximation will be poor. So here, as you can see, there is the rank, okay? So typically, so if the rank uh, 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 increases, then uh, the, the, this, the single value will become smaller and smaller. So this suggests that we should uh, seek uh, low rank estimators. So which is what we will do uh, uh, in a few slides. So before, so before introducing the estimator, I want to mention a link to um, uh, the theory of uh, conditional mean embeddings, okay? Um, which uh, has been studied, uh, uh, I would say quite a bit in, uh, in machine learning. And so what is this? Uh, uh, so people, uh, people speak of uh, uh, kernel mean embeddings or conditional, uh, kernel conditional mean embeddings. So uh, what, what are they? So uh, we have our reproducing kernel neighbor space. A little p is our transition kernel, okay? So it's, a, it's, a, it's a essentially a conditional probability, which tells us the value, the, 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 the probability of the value tomorrow given the value today, okay? So x is the value today. And this uh, uh, conditional mean embedding is the expectation of this feature mapping, okay? tomorrow given the value today. So the feature mapping is um, as a function from the state space to the Hilbert space, <clears throat> which, uh, um, which defines the kernel, okay? <clears throat> so by using uh, some basic reasonings, uh, basic, basic reasoning on producing kernel Hilbert space, we can rewrite the risk of the operator G with this, the, um, this different way. So it can be written as the expectation over the, um, the pair X and Y, which, uh, so, which are a sample from this joint distribution row. So I sample X from the invariant distribution and Y from the transition kernel, so from the conditional distribution. Okay, and here I, I measure, uh, well, I predict the embedding of y as g star, the embedding of x, but g star is a joint, okay? Um, and I can also rewrite in this way. So, so this different uh, formula for, um, for, uh, for the risk is perhaps more familiar um, uh, to people working in statistics because it suggests that there is some some, some linear regression here, right? Which, uh, which starts to capture the, uh, the, the, the process, okay? So, um, so using this uh, expression, we can now <clears throat> define our estimators, okay? So <clears throat> what we will have, what we normally typically have in statistical learning, we have an IID sample from the distribution of the joint distribution of the input and the output. Uh, in our case, it's a little bit different as I mentioned because we observe the dynamical systems. So we observe the Markov chain. So what we will typically observe will be a sequence of states along the Markov chain. So X1, X2, et cetera, where um, X1 will be sampled from the invariant distribution, X2, from the uh, conditional distribution, from this uh, uh, transition kernel, and so on. Okay. Now, given this trajectory, 
we are interested in finding an operator which minimizes the risk. So this is the learning problem. Okay. And a natural approach in statistical learning is empirical risk minimization. So we are going to compute the empirical risk, which is the empirical mean of our loss function, right? That uh, given the analogy, the, given the connect, the, the link to conditional mean embedding is given by this uh, uh, square error. Okay, so we predict uh, the embedding of yi, the next state, by this linear operator, a joint, applied to the embedding of xi. Okay, <clears throat> so the estimators that we will uh, uh, present uh, minimize the empirical risk over um, a class of operators. Okay, so they <clears throat> also a remark to say that um, if, uh, uh, um, so if, if you don't like this connection to conditional mean embeddings and you want to work with our first uh, 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 definition of the risk, right? Which is also intuitive, right? Because our goal, as I mentioned in the beginning, is to estimate the restriction of the coupon operator to the Hilbert space by, the injection times the operator G on the Hilbert space, then uh, if you like this notion of risk, then uh, um, the corresponding notion of empirical risk, which, which is a different way of writing the one that I've introduced here, is also is simply you replace the Z pi and S pi by some empirical operators, some empirical estimates of these operators, and then you have the empirical risk, this different expression for the empirical risk. Okay. So <clears throat> um, now our estimators. So we'll present some estimators which minimize the risk plus some regularization over a certain space. And uh, these estimators in particular, Kenner ridge regression, they are, uh, um, they are the extension of the usual estimators used in uh, machine learning and statistics. So kind of ridge regression is regularized least squares or taken of regularization, different names. <clears throat> we minimize empirical risk plus the norm of your estimator, the, the norm, the square norm in the Hilbert space <clears throat> times uh, the norm times some regularization parameter gamma, some positive parameter gamma. So this canary regression estimator and the other estimators which I'm going to present, they are all of the following form here, okay? So they are all characterized by um, a square matrix W of size N times N, okay? N times N, where N is the sample size, okay? So the estimators are computed by uh, specifying this n times n matrix. The second estimator is the principal component regression estimator. And so this estimator, uh, what it does, it first projects the input to a lower dimensional subspace. So the, subspa this, um, the linear subspace, which captures most of the variance of the data, okay? In the Hilbert space, so we are working in the Hilbert space. And then it does a linear regression uh, when, uh, uh, <clears throat> the input is restricted to this subspace. Uh, so this can also be written as a, a truncated, um, truncated, um, so we, um, we take uh, this matrix W to be the kernel matrix where we uh, set to zero the eigenvalue, the, uh, where we set to zero the, the, um, the, the eigenvalues from R plus one onward, okay. Uh, also interesting to, to mention uh, this principal component regression is, uh, is essentially is identical to a, a very well studied estimator in, uh, in uh, uh, these data-driven dynamical uh, systems, which is called kernel, kernel DMD. The third estimator, which is uh, our proposal, is a reduced rank estimator, which minimizes the empirical risk over um, the set of uh, at most rank operators, okay? So, uh, so the operator the G that we seek is constrained to have rank R. 
And in addition, there is also a ticker of regularization added, uh, <clears throat> um, ticker of type regularizer added to the empirical risk. Uh, so this also, this reduced rank regression estimator is well studied in statistics. In, in, in the case of finite dimensional spaces, in, here what we what we do uh, essentially is to extend it to the, to the Hilbert space setting. So what is interesting is that um, in the general case of estimators of this type, we can compute the spectra. So we can link the spectral decomposition of a certain matrix to the uh, the spectral decomposition and so the mode decomposition of the estimated Kuban operator. So this is what is uh, discussed, uh, presented in this theorem. So, so first we need to compute the, um, so if this matrix W is of rank R, we need to compute uh, factorization, R factorization of W, and then we need to form this matrix. Okay, so this matrix here is R times R matrix, which is obtained by these factors of W and then this cross kernel matrix between the input and the output. And then we do the spectral decomposition of this R times R matrix. So this is uh, very fast if R is small. And then we can compute the spectral composition of, of G hat, our estimator of this type, right? So the eigenvalues are the same. The static modes are uh, uh, given by this formula. So they are linear combination of the function at the training points with some coefficients which depend on uh, uh, the right factor of W and uh, the, um, the right eigenvector of this matrix. And similarly for the, um, the right eigenfunction of the coup of the estimated coupon operator is also a linear combination of, in this case, of the kernel. Okay, so it's a linear combination of the of the kernel center of the data with some coefficients, which again are computed this time with uh, uh, this should be a typo here. This should be u. So this time with the left uh, factor of w and uh, uh, the, the left uh, eigenvector eigenvectors of this matrix. Okay, so, okay, so it's, a, it's a bit uh, complicated to explain, but at the end, uh, uh, the, uh, the result is quite simple. And the bottom line is that if R is small, uh, like the case of Kennedy regression, uh, this uh, methodology saves both uh, space uh, as a, um, Saves, more, uh, saves both uh, space complexity. So there is a gain in space complexity and also in, uh, um, in uh, computational time in computing the estimator. Uh, so I want to discuss now in the remaining uh, uh, 10, 15 minutes of the talk, first some experiments and then um, briefly sketch uh, uh, statistical learning analysis of, of the estimators. So, so the first example is a, is, a, is a synthetic example in which uh, it's called the noisy logistic map, which is a, a, a famous dynamical system uh, and which is um, uh, of the form in the, in, of the example presented at the beginning of the talk. So there is a, a vector value function F. Uh, so actually in this case is a scalar function because the state space is a, um, the segment, uh, um, the unit interval. And so in this case, uh, uh, by choosing the noise in a, uh, in the, uh, by this expression, so we are able to compute everything about this uh, dynamical system. So the dynamical system, the Cooper operator will be a finite rank operator of rank uh, n plus one, where n is this in even integer appearing in the noise distribution. Uh, in our experiment, uh, n was equal to 20. so the operator has rank 21. So we are able to compute the, um, the invariant distribution, the eigenfunctions, uh, other properties of the dynamical system. And here, so we, um, we try the estimators. And what we see is that um, uh, the Kennedy regression and the reduced rank regression 
perform equally well uh, in terms of uh, prediction risk. So the risk of the estimators of these two estimators is the same. It is smaller than the risk of principal components regression or uh, uh, the well-known kernel DMD. And the reason is that uh, um, we, so in principal component regression and reduced rank regression, we have the same target, uh, the same rank, the same proposed rank for the estimator, but the reduced rank regression is minimizing the risk. So this has an advantage as we will see uh, when I will present the bounds, the, the, the statistical bounds. So uh, the reduced rank regression, so the proposed uh, estimator performs equally, equally well as kernel rich regression, but it has an improvement when we look at the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenfunction. So in particular, discarding the first eigenvalue, so the first eigenvalue is equal to one, uh, right? Because it corresponds to the equilibrium mode. So, uh, uh, but the second and the third eigenvalues, which are coupled, okay? So they are, they are, they are paired, they are complex or conjugate of each other. Then the reduced rank estimator does a much better job in estimating this. And so here you can see when uh, 100 re uh, repetitions of the experiment, where here you see the red stars are lambda two and lambda three, and then you can see uh, in orange, uh, the estimated eigenvalues by the reduced rank estimator, and they tend to be uh, much closer than, than the, than the <clears throat> than, uh, principal component regression and kernel regression. Okay, so, the second experiment, which I want to uh, briefly discuss, is a, an experiment where we show that um, this methodology can we also naturally coupled with um, um, with deep learning. Okay, so so what we do here, we um, uh, we um, so in this case, uh, we uh, only use the reduced rank estimator. We don't uh, um, try um, the other two. The reason is that um, we have large, uh, uh, large data set and uh, it is much more expensive, as I mentioned, to, to run kernel uh, um, regression. So in this case, we apply uh, our estimator to um, to these uh, to the, the MNIST data set where so what is the dynamical system so at time zero we sample one uh, um, image one digit from one class so in this case zero okay and time one we sample a digit from the next class for class one and so on and so forth okay so every time that uh, uh, that uh, time uh, uh, increases by one, we sample the next digit on the list, okay? And here we use um, either a linear kernel on the row with um, on the pixels or a Gaussian kernel, or we use a linear kernel computed on with some uh, um, pre-trained features from a uh, uh, multi-layer, uh, from, from a CNN, uh, which are the last layer of a CNN classifier, okay? So in this case, as expected, you can see that um, uh, using uh, deep, uh, deep kernels, so to speak, we can do, um, our method can do, uh, does a much better job uh, um, because these features are uh, very informative, right? In this case, and here, what you can see here in this uh, in this uh, in this picture, in, you can see what uh, the digits that our uh, the learned dynamical system predicts when we start from from zero. Okay, so um, the the, <clears throat> the the estimators have been trained with. Uh, 1,000 points, and uh, so here they are presented with a new initial um, digit zero, and then the following digits are produced by applying the coupon operator once, twice, etc. Okay, and as you can see here, the um, the operator with the deep kernel 
uh, you know, uh, predicts much more, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, more natural images. Okay, so um, I maybe I think I have maybe uh, five or maybe ten more minutes, depending. Uh, um, so I think it's, I have 10 more minutes, right? But maybe I'll try to, to do it a bit shorter so there is time for questions. So, so in the last part of the talk, I want to discuss, um, so I kept for the last part of the talk, the, maybe the most uh, interesting or uh, also harder, uh, most difficult part. So which are these, uh, the learning, uh, statistical learning analysis of, <clears throat> of these, uh, of, of, or our estimators. So in particular, I want to discuss uh, um, uh, the reduced rank estimator, okay? And so um, I will present a slightly, I will consider a slightly different estimator, which minimizes the empirical risk over reduced rank. So the rank is at most R and uh, bounded Hilbert Smith norm, okay? So in our, in the estimators that I presented in, um, before and also using the experiments, this uh, square norm was added to the empirical risk as a regularizer. Instead here, I use it as a constraint. However, this is not uh, a big difference because um, uh, the two estimators can be linked one to another. So, but for, um, uh, to present analysis, it is more convenient to consider this, uh, uh, this formulation. So in this case, what we are able to derive is uh, a uniform bound, okay, on uh, the uniform deviation between the risk and the empirical risk over the class of such estimators. And uh, um, so here you see, so this first result is presented for IID data, okay? So our input-output pairs, xi, yi, are sample IID as opposed to along the process. <clears throat> but we can also then transform this result in a, um, in a bound when the data is sampled along the trajectory. And so here you can see in the bound the role played by the sample size, the rank, and the norm of the estimator. And so what is interesting, so this, uh, so this sigma is not important because it is the variance of the of the kernel um, at, two, at the two same input or outputs. So for the Gaussian kernel, this term is zero because the, the kernel is always equal to one, so the variance is zero. And so this term in red, which is so that the leading term in the bound contains the, uh, the parameters of this class, R and gamma, and also contains the norm, the spectral norm of the covariance of the input, okay? <clears throat> for the analysis, we have assumed for simplicity, but without loss of generality, that the inputs are all have norm bounded by one. Okay. So this means that uh, the spectral norm of the covariance is less or equal than one, but if the data is high dimensional, it can be much smaller than one. Okay. So this term may be very small. Okay. For high dimensional data. <clears throat> so the, the bound. Uh, um, follow some simple uh, decomposition. And then crucially, we use uh, the following concentration inequality, where we bound this cross covariance operator. Okay, so this is the expectation of the input uh, uh, cross product, the output. Okay, we bound the concentration of this, uh, of the cross covariance operator around his empirical uh, um, estimate. So, um, okay, um, maybe I'm running a little bit out of time, but um, the proof also works for the conditional mean embeddings. For the conditional mean embeddings are a little bit more general because in the case of the dynamical system, the input is sampled from the invariant distribution. So the output will also be distributed according to the invariant distribution because this is what invariant means. So the covariance of the input, which is C, is the same as the covariance of the output. Okay, so in the bound, in the bound we have only the 
spectral norm of C, but for the conditional mean embeddings, we also have the spectral norm of the output covariance. Then, uh, so in the paper, we also discuss how we can use another technique uh, um, from uh, this paper to derive an analogous bound, which uh, uh, it's a bit more complicated because it contains what is called the, the effective rank of the operator. But on the other hand, it allows us to compare our estimator to Tikhonov regularization. So the estimator, which doesn't use the rank constraint. And finally, using the, the bound that I presented, we can also derive excess risk bounds. So we can derive a bound, which is not the true risk minus the empirical risk, but it is the risk of our estimator minus the risk of the best estimator, which in this case is zero, okay? As we, as we saw at the beginning, uh, the first part of the talk. So in this case, we see that in the excess risk bound, there is this approximation error term, which basically, so this, this term will be, this is the, this is the, 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 the L2 norm of the residual spectrum from R plus one onward, where R is the rank. So if the operator, if the target operator is of rank R, this term is zero and we have a very good bound. Otherwise we also need to optimize the bound over R to, to reach the best trade-off also um, um, for, the, for the rank. Um, so I don't have time to, to skip the proof, to, to, to present the proof, but uh, I just briefly want to mention that um, we use some results from a previous paper with uh, Andreas Maurer, where we were able to derive these concentration results for uh, um, positive operators. So in here, um, so we need to, so this is a key result that we need to prove. And the way, we, the way to prove it is to use, uh, so first to uh, symmetrize uh, so to the, the, the operators, so with, with double dimension, and then by using, uh, by, uh, by writing the self-adjoint operator as a difference of positive operators, which can always be done, but in this particular case, it can be done in a very simple way. It can be written as a difference. So this should be minus, in fact, the difference of two rank one operators, and then, we use some uh, um, uh, basic um, basic reasoning, and then the result from this from this paper to derive the bound. Um, we um, so okay, so we can also, as as I mentioned before, deal with the with the case typically in, in practice where the data is collected along the trajectory of the system. Uh, in fact, it could also be multiple trajectories of the system. But so in this case, um, so the analysis here is preliminary. There is certainly more work to do. But so what we do, we introduce these uh, mixing coefficients of the, of, the, uh, of the Markov chain. So beta mixing in particular, which basically tell us how quickly um, the process is. Uh, so if we look at two, um, two random variables in the process or two, to segments, okay, of, of the process, which are far away from, which are far separated, how far do they need to be so that the two random variables can be considered as essentially independent? So this is captured by this mixing coefficient. And then uh, um, by some reasoning, which goes back to work by, uh, by Bin Yu, we are able to extend the bounds, which I just presented to, um, to the scenario, to the more practical scenario uh, in which the, the sample is obtained, the data is obtained by sampling along the process. And here, so you see proposition three, which could be compared to the proposition uh, two here, right? How it is modified when the sample is not IID. And we see that we essentially get the same bound but the sample size needs to be replaced by an effective sample size, which is a sample size divided by the mixing time. So this mixing time is the time at which this beta mixing coefficient is very small, okay? Okay, so um, with this, uh, I want to uh, conclude. So we presented a general framework for uh, um, uh, 
learning coupon operators and uh, their spectral decomposition or mode decomposition, uh, which is very general and it is supported. Uh, so we define the notion of a risk and we define, we present the estimator which are supported by uh, theoretical guarantees. Um, in the future, so what is missing, uh, there are certainly um, uh, number of steps which are missing from this analysis. In particular, it is important to uh, uh, study more in detail the estimation of the eigenvalues and, 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 the, and the eigenvectors. It is also, it would, also would, it would also be very interesting to derive fully data dependent bounds. So bounds which contains uh, not distribution quantities like the beta, mix, the beta mixing coefficient, but estimated quantities. And finally, maybe more on the practical side, uh, it is very important to, uh, how do we choose the kernel, right? So in the, in the experiment on MNIST, I showed you that the kernel really plays an important role, like, uh, you know, like in the case of <laughs> classification of the, of the digits. And so how do we choose the kernel? So here I want to mention uh, a recent paper. So we have a, a number of line of work on meta learning, and in particular, this recent paper we study how to learn how to meta learn the kernel by um, using kernel integral forms. So we, we write the kernel in the following way, as a like 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 to do it for Bochner kernel, and then we um, we uh, try to learn the distribution, which is the in a, in a way similar to GANs. So we write distribution as the push forward of some simple distribution like the Gaussian and a neural network. So we try to learn the parameters of this neural network. And this could also perhaps be very interesting in this setting. So uh, let me finally mention that we have a number of positions at IIT in Genoa uh, to work with, with me and other groups. Uh, so this is a part of a, of a plan of IIT to expand the machine learning and uh, statistics and applied mathematics. So if you're interested, you can drop me an email and uh, I'm happy to tell you more. So thanks you for your attention. Thank you for the great talk, uh, Massimiliano. Um, so yeah, um, 